Hello, I'm Carl McDormand, and I'd like to give a presentation today charting the Uncanny Valley. So Masahiro Mori in 1970 wrote an article for Energy Magazine, and he came up with the idea of the Uncanny Valley. He made the observation that as you make robots appear more human-like, they also seem more familiar. And you would think that at the extreme, they would just become more and more familiar until they're as familiar as a healthy human being. However, he made a kind of argument that actually robots that are almost human could seem very strange or eerie. And he called this the uncanny valley. For example, if you sh shook the hand of someone with a prosthetic hand, then you might think it's a real hand, but after you touch it, it would feel cold and there'd be a lack of soft tissue, and then you'd find it to be very strange. So he thought that to build a human-like robot would be like multiplying that a thousand-fold. However, he gave one access for familiarity, and there was also negative familiarity. But generally, in cognitive psychology, we don't think about there being such a thing as negative fi familiarity. Things can be novel or extremely novel, but there's no negative familiarity. So it seemed that he was confounding two different dimensions, novelty and valence, or hedonic value, which is like pleasure and pain. So, for example, in this slide, we see a reward curve and a punishment curve. Now, in thinking about aesthetic experience, Wundt had the idea of adding these curves together. So this provides the black curve in the center, the Wundt curve. So we might think of some very novel art or music, such as Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, being disturbingly novel because it's too new and we don't know what to make of it and eventually we become habituated and it might become boring. But in the middle we would have a, a very strong aesthetic experience that's positive. I did an experiment with 45 Indonesian participants and we looked at some morphs going from a mechanical looking robot to an android to a human being. So here's going from Sony's Curio robot to an android made by David Hansen to a Philip K. Dick, who's a now deceased science fiction novelist. And what we found, for example, is that there's a kind of middle ground between robot, mechanical looking robot and android that can be quite eerie. And if we look at a kind of strange, familiar axis, then we also find this kind of uncanny valley. And in this example, we're going from uh, Elevier, which is based on Wakamaru, to uh, Android Replier Q1 Expo to the model for Replier Q1 Expo. And we also find a similar uncanny valley. However, I think there's a limitation of, from this sort of ex experiment because we're only looking at still images. And how important could still images be? They're not really an important part of our evolutionary history. 